money, money. That's Billy Idol for everybody out there in this wonderful world of ours. And of course, it's Dan Radio Style. Hope everybody's doing great. You know what I am? Three super powerful ways to attract back your love, your specific someone, your whatever. This is your three really powerful ways. You're already probably kind of doing these, but they're refinements. They're a little bit of a tweak, right? A little bit of a something, something that's going to put you out in front of yourself. It's going to improve what you're currently kind of doing. So one, vision. We need this vision that we're holding, this imaginal scene that we use maybe nightly, right? Maybe a lot of us, right? And for those of us that have it larger than this, maybe try to expand this out because you're already like, you know, taking it up a notch anyway. But for those of us that have like a scene we're imagining every night, right? Every night before we go to bed, maybe they're holding us, right? Maybe that's the scene, right? We're just being held by them, right? What we want to do is we want to expand that. We want to add to it. We want there to maybe like you're kissing the hand or something while it's there. So you can almost maybe taste like the taste of it, whatever that might be. I don't even want to try to guesstimate what the hell someone's arm tastes like. In my case, it's going to taste like lollipops and sunshine um, mixed together because I assume that's got to be what she tastes like. Well, anyway, (laughs) I've been sidetracked. Nonetheless, when you're thinking about them, you want to take it up that notch. You want to make it bright, kind of like what I just did a second ago. That... When you take it to that level, when you add that level of uh, to it and give it some real chops, some real emotion, some reality to it, some it's not just this like distant sort of thing that I'm imagining. It's like real. I'm in the moment. I'm so feeling it. And whatever you're doing, kick it up a notch. I mean, whatever it is, it doesn't matter if you're maybe not able to see it to that level of reality, then maybe you're just pretending like having you can feel maybe someone's arms around your chest right if you're a lady right maybe at least that you can at least feel that right try to take it up a notch try to see if you can involve more uh more to it maybe maybe feel their you know their their stomach against your back or maybe that their leg you know how sometimes our knees go in between people's knees boy i'm gonna this is uh this is gonna get become a very dirty show if i don't watch myself so <laughs> again, what you imagine are, let's take it into a slightly different direction and detour off of the in-bed um, imaginal scenes. And let's try something maybe like the wedding, right? Maybe it's that first dance. Maybe you're dancing around, do, 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 right? And normally it's just been staring at their face and how wonderful that is. Now, try to add something kind of cool to it where in the background behind them, you almost see like maybe your dad, right? Maybe your mom, like you can see people that are watching this first dance, You're adding that level of reality to it. You're adding that brightness to it. You're adding that reality to it. And again, I've talked about this many times, well, a few times, and I'm going to keep talking about it. The same place in the brain that stores memories, that remembers things that happened, is the same place that imagination works. It's the same place, exact same place. You can look it up. You can fact check me all you want. Check it out. The place that it happens. So when you imagine things for any sort of length of time, it kind of almost gets seared in as a memory. And that memory is actually kind of what you're creating. It's funny how it plays out, but that's really kind of what it is, right? So that's what Goddard was talking about. You imagine it's real because you created it inside of you. The creator's within us, right? So because of that, it's just an issue of down the road a little bit. What we just created, imagined in our head, it's going to pop up into reality down the road. So vision, adding brightness to it, making it awesome, add a little more specific. And then the most important part is this, your, your daily routine, whatever your daily routine is, add this to it. Try to kick it up a notch. Maybe, you know, don't be like crazy. It's like weightlifting. You're like, kick it up a notch and then don't try to like kick it up like five notches. Don't get way ahead of yourself. Kick it up a notch, do that for a couple days. It's kind of like working out. You kick it up a weight and then you try to make sure you can still do some reps, right? You, you want to be hurting afterwards, but you don't want to be like dead, So again, keep going with it, try to expand it, try to move it up, you know, maybe a few days at a time, a week at a time, and then kick it up another notch, add some more to it, make it brighter, 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 because the more that spotlight shines on this, the more real it is, especially within your own memory. Oh yes, the memory. All right. Number two, make your affirmations work better for you. Now, a lot of us are just like, we have our thing that we say, right? We say it every time. Now, me kind of having a background in voice, this is a big deal to me. And this always kind of has been, but it really makes a big difference. And I want a lot of you guys to 
really practice this. And really looking in the mirror is a great technique. And it, people have, I don't know, like fancy names for it. I don't know. I'd look in the mirror and talk to yourself. That's what I call it. It's That's my fancy name. Not probably the marketing genius that I need to be, no. But that's what I want you guys to do because I'm trying to make this simple. That's my whole gig, I think. I hope. I, and I like to play music on the front and back, radio style. So again, and it's life. Anyway, so we're talking about making these affirmations work. Tonality, the way we say it. It's kind of like having a smile on your face when you do it. Make it real. Like, you are really a good person. Like, do you hear like kick it up? Like, you really are. Like, like you're an endearing. Like, this is your reassurance if you need it. Or, man, you are freaking awesome. And when I need to feel like that, yes, kick your butt. I kick it with that extra um from that direction. Add some emotion to the voice in your head or out loud that you're using when you're doing these affirmations. It makes them more real. It makes them more powerful, more. Yeah. And you give it more of that. Because again, that's that emotion that almost pushes that, you know, those little veins when they stick out when you're singing that song. You ever look in the mirror when you're singing? And those little veins, like, well, big veins. They're like, ah. Again, it's, like, uh, it's that emotion when you uh, push it out. And it's super awesome, very powerful, creates that positive kind of um, that, that positive kind of vibe with it. And there is sort of a pose, and you can do this if you'd really like to, and believe it or not, it's, it's true. And there's some study, and I, I'm sorry, I don't remember where the heck I learned this from, but there's a pose to, they, it's, I, I think there's, what's the fancy name? The power posture is what some have called it, which uh, I don't know uh, who, who came up with it. Needless to say, it's more with your hands on your waist, kind of fists in. I, I call that the superhero pose, frankly, is what I've always gone with this. But you put your chest out. Right, and you kind of push your chest out. Your arms are very to your side, but your chest is pushed out. And then on top of that, your chin, your chin is kind of out and up, right? And then you say these affirmations, like basically opened up to yourself, and it's a very powerful posture. Now, again, you know, if anyone's looking, that could possibly look a little goofy. I will say it. So again, try to find places where you can do this, but really mean it. Looking in the mirror. I think without all the power posture, because that's just uh, for me. Again, I'm sharing it because it's just, it's a it's a thing that's out there. But for me, it's the almost looking in the eyes of my own self, and it's like I'm talking to my soul, or I'm talking to me, or I don't know who it is exactly. But it's like, dude, you're all, you're good, man. Like you seriously. And the times I do that, it is profound how I feel in the power and the level, and it shifts, and it really can carry you through the day. So even if you're having one of those doubt moments, run into the restroom, maybe you're at work, run into a, you know, you take a little quick potty break, hit the mirror, check it all out. If you got a compact while you're in the toilet area, whatever, right? Just check it out. All right, I look good. Make sure, give yourself that, you're all right, you got this, you got this. All right, number three, going quick, gratitude. Gratitude's huge in the big, big picture, but what so many of us, kind of forget it's not just this being grateful for what we're hoping is coming and that's the general understanding of it i'm grateful for me and my sp getting together for me and love finding each other for me and my new job connecting i'm so grateful i'm so happy with all this extra money i'm going to be making yes these things are great but the problem generally is many of us have problems being grateful for something that's not here right now. We've had this discussion many times, right, about paying attention to right now and how distracting that can often be to what your tomorrow will be. Your tomorrow is not right now. It can't be. It's impossible, right? So tomorrow is going to be different than right now. And right now, so many of us look at it and go, oh, there's no way tomorrow is going to be awesome because right now sucks. And it's like, no, no. Right now sucks, and that's why we're going to make tomorrow more awesome. That's why we're doing Law of Attraction, because your right now sucks. That's why most people find Law of Attraction. Your right now suddenly started sucking, and you decided there's got to be a way to change the suckage, to turn the suckage around, turn the suckage around. Right, there should be a song after that. If there's not, there should be. Love to feel percussion of the suckage, right? Um, I don't know, Miami Sound Machine, whatever. <laughs> anyway, Julius, Julia, uh, Gloria, Stefan. There we go. Anyway, uh, suck it. <laughs> the more of it we get, the, I don't even know where I was going. Gratitude, be grateful, right? The the fact is, it's not the suckage that that turns everything around for us. I don't know where I was even going. It was funny to me at the time. Being grateful for the important, for the little things, for what you have right now. That 
is where you can really get behind it because it's so hard to see what you don't already have. It's so hard to get behind that. So being grateful for the things you have right now, and I've talked about this before, it gets you thinking about what's going right in your life, what's actually working right now in your life. That is something to be grateful of. And it forces you to look at the things that are good because a lot of us are so focused on what we're trying to manifest and it missing and it not being here right now that we fail to notice all of the things that are going well. And we let this one thing that's not going quite right let everything else suck. So we need to remember, be grateful for what you have because what that does is that keeps that gratitude cycle going. It's not so much that your exercise of being grateful for the thing out here that you want, right? Your specific person, your money, your job, your whatever. It's not being grateful for that as much as the feeling of gratitude creates more gratitude. Gratitude is a thankful for life bringing you. And when you're looking constantly at life from that standpoint, it creates more of this awesome ebb and flow because now you're Method, now you're thinking about it, I should say, is more in line with, okay, this is happening because I've created it. This is good. This is me, right? Instead of this sucks, I'm not happy with this. So when we can be grateful for what we do have versus ungrateful for what we don't have, I don't know how else to say that, right? Grateful for what we do have feels really good. Ungrateful for what I don't have feels pretty crummy. Being grateful is what gets it going. I hope this all helps. I'm sorry I kind of went a little long. I don't know. Not too terrible. I've done way worse. Um, going out with another great song. This one's by Ellie Goulding. It's called Burn. It's Dan Radio Style. Should be Dan Radio Style still. Light it up Like we're the stars of the human race Human race When the lies turn it down They don't know what they heard Shut the mind Spread love 